Hello, welcome to 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. My guest today is Andrew Howell, the uh, man behind the Race for Peace movement, the inspiration for the Race for Peace movement. Uh, Andrew has been on the show before, several times, as he and the people who have been working with him have been working very, very hard to spread the message of peace, to spread the message of, of harmony and cooperation between law enforcement and the communities they serve, to call attention to the fact that there is a need for tolerance, understanding, uh, cooperation, uh, just a little slack and to ease some of the tension that we see in our streets today. Uh, he's here today because after three years of effort on his part and the people who have been working with him, I thought it would be helpful to ask him what he's learned, uh, what he feels he has not yet accomplished, and what is yet to be accomplished. So, Andrew? Hey, Rick, how are you? Uh, it's good to see you God again, as you. always. Thanks for letting me uh, do God bless me. I need all, all the blessing I can get. <laughs> all the blessing I can get. Sure you do. <laughs> Uh, as I said, it's been three years. Yes. It's been more than three years yes, since we first met. We were introduced by, I think, uh, now Superintendent of Police, Chris Flanagan. Exactly. Uh, uh, Radner, uh, who gave me a call one day, told me about, it, about this guy who's a ball of energy and who's uh, running around and screaming race for peace. Uh, we had one show, two shows, three shows. You brought in some of the people who are working with you. Yes. Uh, an, an interesting mix of people, I thought. And I assume that they're still part of your your platoon of people who work with you. Yes, they are. Is that right? All right. And, and so, as I said, I, I wanted to chat with you at this point, uh, I think a, an important point three years out, about what you've learned about the process of making peace, uh, what you feel you've accomplished, what you haven't accomplished, and what is yet to be accomplished. And let's start with what you think you've learned over the past three years. Before I give you a chance to answer, I should point out, uh, and perhaps you can tell us more about it, for several years before Race for Peace, you were a, a community organizer, an activist. Yes. You represented the NAACP in yes. this region, I think, uh, in addition to holding a full-time job, raising a family, and so on. Yes. So this is not new to you, that is, organizing people, getting people involved, getting people excited about a cause. Uh, is that correct? Correct. Uh, you're pretty good at it, I think. Well, God blessed me to have the talents that I have, so I give it all to God. And uh, as far as what's going on now is a sense of balance. So when you have all these people out here talking evil about the police, there has to be somebody out here talking good yeah. about the police. And I feel as though, and a lot of people that's on the Race of Peace is the same way, uh, we represent the good police officers. So there are some incidences where there's killings and some negative mm -hmm. violence, you know, towards uh, African Americans mm -hmm. be in particular. But I feel as though that I've met and work with excellent police officers, from Christine Coulter, which is the Philadelphia Police Commissioner right now, to Michael McGrath, who was the first recruit you know, to several others, Chris Flanagan, John Viola. I mean, these guys are great. They're mm -hmm. incredible. You know, so there has to be a sense of balance, whether it's your diet or whether it's peace or whatever you're doing. There has to be a sense of balance. Why is there so much violence in our streets today? Not just in urban areas, not just the center of Philadelphia, but the entire region. Why? Well, you have to look back at just TV shows. When I was growing up, Bugs Bunny would get hit with an anvil. So, I mean, it goes from TV to these video games to just a sense and no remorse for human life. So there's no value on human life, you know. And uh, it's it's a shame. You know, I lost my son this year. I want to talk know, about that. Yeah. March 26, 2019, you know, through gun Having, having lost your daughter. Lost my daughter through cocaine and fentanyl, you know. And one thing I like to mention is just like uh, alcohol. If you're an alcoholic, they're not going to admit it. So one thing I always talk about is black on black murders. Nobody's talking about that, you know. Mm -hmm. And the first part of the problem with black on black murders is admitting it, you know. So I, I for one, am going to stand up about it. We're having a big major meeting um, December the 9th, 2019, in North Philadelphia, with a team of individuals that 
we have the answer to this black on black murder. You know, um, some you people. You say you have an answer. We have the answer, and uh, we, some people talk about the proximity. Some <coughs> people talk about violence. Some people talk about murder, but they never put the two together. If you add up the statistics of how many people are getting murdered in the United States, whether it's mm. Chicago, which is the number one place for population for blacks, and the other one is Philadelphia, it's into the thousands. You know, so it's a big, major problem. As far as the police department, that's a no-brainer. You know, it's communication, it's trust, it's um, human beings being human. It's uh, the police are the public, the public are the police. Mm -hmm. It's a no-brainer, you know. But on newscasts, regrettably, almost every night, um, there are reports of violence in the streets. There are reports of innocent children being shot. Um, and maimed for life or, or killed. Uh, but there also, you see in the same reports, neighbors, people in the community saying, we've got to stop this. And, and blacks, whites, Asians, everybody, they're all saying the same thing. We've got to stop it. We've got to take our neighborhoods back. We've got to take our streets back. We have to clean up, uh, get the gangs out of here and get the druggies out of here so our kids can come out the front door and play because they can't anymore. Well, no, I agree with you 100% on that, Rick. But like I said before, if you have a house that's dirty, you want to clean your house. So me being a black man, which, you know, the largest human organ is your flesh. So what you see is a black man sitting in front of you right now. So, you know, I have to take care of my own house. You know, and if mm -hmm. I see black people killing black people, I don't see Chinese, Puerto Rican, Mexican, white killing blacks. You know, in, in the city of Philadelphia, it's just says 300 murders. I don't see 20 murders committed by another race. You know, so this is a serious, serious problem. You know, and, uh, you know, I'll be the first to admit it. You know, it's, it's part of my race. Mm -hmm. You know, although I see clearly and I speak the truth. So, you know, the race of peace is a different angle, but the race of peace working for itself. The race of peace is a machine. You know, and like I said, with the race of peace, it only takes one. And it took one individual, God bless me, it just so happened to be me, who went to another individual. Mm -hmm. Now it's thousands and thousands of people that know about the race of peace. Nobody says no to peace. You know, and uh, we don't, I haven't been on no hustle, which is trying to raise money, which is trying to raise finances for it. I don't get paid for what I do. You know, it's just that uh, God bless me to have the heart and the will and the courage mm -hmm. to step out in front. And right. be on the mainstream with it. Talk about that December meeting again. December 9th, down at 12th and Cambria, Philadelphia, PA, North Philadelphia, PA. Yeah. There'll be some individuals, Donald Jackson, uh, individual from the Youth Study Center, Terry Starks. He's a he was at the basketball game yesterday. Karan Banks. They'll be headlining the uh, answers. And what it is is keeping it simple, making the answer to the black on black murder. But you, you say you've got the solution. What is the solution? We have the solution. Well, actually, we're doing the solution. Some of these guys that I'm talking about, they're doing the solution. Their heart and mind is into um, solving the murders with inside the community. We don't say no to any other race. They can help. But the mm -hmm. real problem, like I say, if you're an alcoholic, you have to admit the problem mm -hmm. first. I haven't heard any leaders come out and say, hey, there's a black on black murders, you know, and, and that's what's going on. And but, that's the truth. But others have said it. No, they don't say black on black murders. They say violence. They say murder, but they don't put black and murder together and they don't put black and violence together. You know, it's being politically correct. Mm -hmm. So some may say I'm politically incorrect right now, but like I said, I'm just going by the statistics of this country. I'm going by the statistics of within this region and within Philadelphia. And I don't see any other. So um, you're saying the first step is for the black community to admit that it admit has it. a problem? That it has a problem. And that it is within their power to solve their problem, their own problem? It's within all our problems. Anybody, like I said, who would like to help, yes. there's no problem with but, that. But I think implicit in what you're saying is the black community and the leadership in the black community should assume responsibility and accountability for cleaning up their own house. You're, 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 you're right about that, Rick. No, um, don't let me put words in your mouth. No, 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 no. You're right. It's accountability and taking ownership yeah. to your own house. Yeah. If I ask Rick Anthony right now, Rick, can you help me clean my backyard? First thing you're going to say was, Andrew, 
but couldn't you do half yourself? <laughs> you know, so it's obvious, and it's, you know, it's like I said, it's a no-brainer. And, you know, I've always been a, a young man. I'm an older man now, 54 years old, and I've always been someone who always stand up yeah. to what I believe in, and I'll fight this until I die. You know, when I took a sabbatical in the NAACP from activism years ago, what was on my desk was black on black crime, yeah. which escalated to black on black murder. So through what I've learned through doing 30 years of activism, whether it's job fairs, economic development, protest, picket, march, that's another angle. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is a highly sophisticated way of handling the problem. Marching, my feet are tired. Holding up signs, <laughs> my arms are tired. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that being effective. I see holding up your hand in the air like you really care right. or taking a knee so I can see mm -hmm. that's not it. The problem's in the community. So, you know, they bring a, it brings awareness for some individuals, but I'm just taking my own medicine. I'm looking in the mirror at myself, mm -hmm. Andrew, what can you do? Andrew, what are you doing? You know, so there's a lot of leaders out here. You know, I won't say names and titles, but there's a lot of people in a very powerful position that's black, you know, that can, be, that can do 10 times more than what mm -hmm. they're doing. You know, so those are the people I speak up for. I mean, I'm going to need help from, you know, the athletes, the entertainers, the movie stars. You know, they want to get a pat on the back if they open up a school, a pat yeah. on the back if they open up a health center, a pat on the back if they do this and do that. Do that from day one. If you got a million dollars and you're 19 years old, mm -hmm. give half a million to the, to, mm -hmm. to, the, to the community. Educators, I have a GED and a CDL, and I'm very proud of it, a CDL and a GED, which is a no-brainer, right? Mm -hmm. Doing what I do. You have blacks that have been to Harvard, been to Yale, been to all kinds of universities. I do not see them going back to the community to help. And it's, and it's frustrating. It's very frustrating. I don't see, I see mega churches, mega mm -hmm. mosques, but I don't see no mega hospitals. That's black owned, black managed, black operated. I don't see that. You know, so there's a, there's a huge issue, you know, and uh, we're about to tackle it, you know. So right now with the racial piece, I go back to that again. Yeah. It's a no brainer. The cops are, um, it was communication. It was understanding. It was the police are the public. The public yeah. are the police, which is 21st century policing. It's a no-brainer. When I asked, hey, join, Uncle Sam needs you, they jumped right aboard. So when Uncle Andrew asked these guys, can you join, can you help out, I haven't had any resistance. I don't have any disappointments. Does the and black I, community listen to you? Yes. Yes, they do. I, last night was a evidence of it. You know, we had a major basketball game in Lower Marion High School, which is the Kobe Bryant's gym. And that was a stepping stone. Superintendent Michael McGrath orchestrated that last year for our third mm -hmm. annual community and police basketball game where they play together, not against each other, like mm -hmm. a lot of other groups. You know, so um, I, I have to say they do listen. You know, um, somebody has to take the lead. Somebody has to have courage and will and stamina to do it. But as you said before, it will require bringing a lot of different people from different specialties, education, health care, uh, law enforcement, uh, business leaders as well. Bring them all together. How do you propose to bring them all together? The same way I've been doing it with any other, other thing I do. I, I give them a proposal. I give them a, a, a question. And it's up to them to accept mm -hmm. it or reject it. You know, uh, like any any other thing I ever did, whether it was a stop sign when you had to get a petition. You had to get 90% of the yeah. people on your block to get the stop sign put up. Everything is simple. It's not no rocket scientist. What I'm saying is I'm hoping people get off their backsides. Mm -hmm. If you're mm -hmm. so educated, why is it taking a man that has a GED and a CDL <laughs> to holler this out, to, to toot the horn? You know, like, and I respect the fire department. Everybody who I ever approached, whether it was about a problem with race or whether it was a problem with the police, I have had no resistance. Andrew, I know from my own experience, it's impossible to say no to you. <laughs> well, Rick, one thing I like to say, and I love mainline public TV, 
you know, Vince and the crew and you guys, mm -hmm. you know, you gave us a, basically a format, you know, and it only takes one, everybody, you know, yeah. and this was the first show <coughs> who mm -hmm. really took us on. Because I know everybody said, oh, my God, here's Andrew Howe. What's he going to say next? Yeah. Hey, you, you got to believe what I'm telling you. It comes from God. I'm not a rocket scientist type of guy. God gave me the gift to do what I do, and I'm not hustling nobody I, for I, it. I'd like to talk about something that's very personal. Yes. You had tragedy strike your family twice. Yes. The loss of your daughter uh, yes. to opiates, I think, oh, uh, drug overdose. Yes. And then more recently, your son, uh, who was killed in uh, what part of the city was the it? The Frankfurt section of Philadelphia, section. PA, yes. Uh, he, he was shot, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. W what do you say to other parents who grieve as you have and who look up and say, what, what's going on? Why? Well, there you go again. There you go again, Rick. There was no white man, Chinese man, Puerto Rican or Mexican who killed my son. It was a black man, you know, so that's evidence right there. It's well, black on black murder, but what do I say to the was people? He, was he assaulted? Was he robbed? It was, it was domestic, and it was just a, a big mess, you know. I'm mm -hmm. dealing with Larry Krasner, who's the Philadelphia district attorney on that. He's on top of that case. You know, mm -hmm. God bless him. Uh, what I say to people is that we're all here on b borrowed time. I was born in 1965. God knows when I'm going, how I'm going, and why I'm going. Yeah. So we're all on borrowed time. When I look at my 32-year-old son, it's very sad, and, and you do shed some tears. But what I say to myself is look at the good times, look at the, uh, the stuff I've taught him, mm -hmm. look at the stuff that he's taught me, and once again, we're on borrowed time. You know, it's God's will. Regrettably, there are many people like you who have lost a son, a daughter, another family member yes. in Philadelphia and the surrounding area. Exactly. Regrettably, there are a number of them. Why can't they be coalesced? Why can't they be brought together? Because like you, they've got a personal stake in it. Why can't they be brought together as a group and demand solutions to the problems, not of the city, but of the people who live in the communities? Demand that people come out of their front doors and stand up for a cleaner community, a better street, a safer street. Why can't they be called upon? Because I don't know that anybody's done that. Well, there's a lot of certain groups out here that I don't know what their agenda is, but it did not take for my daughter to die from fentanyl and cocaine with the overdose for me to talk about. It did not take my son to be murdered uh, in March of 2019 for me to talk about it. You know, I was talking about these things before mm -hmm. it happened. So I'm not on the hustle to try to get money but and gain traction. Yeah, but I, talk, I talked with you after your daughter had died. And th there was not only a special poignancy about that, but, but there was even a higher resolve. You had a, a higher resolve to do something because well, of that personal experience. Well, and I always told people it's a two-sided coin with the drugs. You had the drug dealer. Yeah. And you had the drug user. Everybody was looking at the drug dealer, or everybody was looking at the drug user. They weren't looking at two, <coughs> the two-sided coin. Mm -hmm. With the murders, it's a sense of mentality. So when I looked and I checked the statistics of how Philadelphia was 500 murders at one time and went down to 250 murders, I, I talked to um, Police Commissioner Colton. I said, hey, maybe we should look and take a page out of some of these other people's book as far as how did they get the mm -hmm. murder rate from 500 down to 250, and it didn't have anything to do with education, mm -hmm. nothing to do with economics, nothing to do with employment, because back then you had more, you had less guns on the street, but more murders. Mm -hmm. So you see my point? So um, it's the mentality that's out here. I believe in the gun laws and stuff like that, but guns don't kill people. People kill people. Knives don't kill people. Baseball mm -hmm. bats don't kill people. People kill people. So, uh, we have to take this on with an aggression, with a sensibility of it, it was solved before, halfway. Now the, the total number of murders in our region has climbed, mm -hmm. you know, so. Um, and you're saying that it, it, it begins with talking about it. It begins, with, it. it begins with admitting the problem. Like I go back to yeah. an alcoholic. If you're an alcoholic and you want to go to NA, you have yeah. to admit yeah. that you're an alcoholic first. 
you can't hide behind proximity or oh, it's these people yeah. in this proximity and these you can't do that you have to three, do three years out more than three years out since you started yeah. the uh, race for peace um are there some things you feel you have not yet accomplished no, like I said once before, Rick, um, the race for peace is a machine. You know, it's it's work. It's it's doing its own work. You know, we've set um, a blueprint. Mm -hmm. You know, for the public, for the police, for the community, with which they serve. You know, when you take an oath, so help me God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why mm -hmm. God's always in play with me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you just have to live up to those expectations. They live on a higher level. Yeah. And, you know, we respect the best let out me of go these back guys. To, let me go back to my question. I, is there anything that you feel you have not yet accomplished in the three years you've been at this? No, I think we've accomplished. You've and accomplished keep quite a bit. Yeah. We, we've, we've accomplished a, quite a bit from one person standing at this. And uh, All right. it's, it's just amazing. It's an amazing ride. Every day is something new. You see, this is from the city of Philadelphia. Tell me about that. <laughs> this, I know what it is. This is presented to me uh, last night at the Lower Marion basketball at the Lower Marion High School. You know, with our community and police basketball game from Mayor Kenny, who through um, years of trying to you know mm -hmm. solve this murder situation and the police situation, that's my uh, award far as you know my commitment and dedication to the city of Philadelphia. And it works. Well. Yeah, it works. It works. <laughs> and I feel very proud of that. You know, I'm not here to toot my horn. I'm not here to get awards. I'm not on the hustle for money. You know, my job is to um, not only bring this to awareness, but drill it through these people's mm -hmm. brains about what we have to do. You are a 501c3. You, 501c3. You we can you accept contributions. We can accept contributions. Which are contribution, tax deductible. Which are tax deductible. And how do people get in touch with you? The website? They can go to the website, www.raceforpeace.org, or they could uh, call 227-6339, you know, 4313. And uh, we're working on some other ways of, uh, you know, generating finances also. Mm -hmm. But like I say, to stand up and stand out, you can't have your hand out. Mm -hmm. Most 501c3s, most people, even in religion, they have their hand out. So I've been blessed from God, and God didn't tell me to hustle no money. He told me, give the people to us, give them the message. Mm -hmm. But I always tell people, don't kill the messenger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just delivering what I, God bless me with. <laughs> okay. Um, there's still something missing, Andrew, and I can't put my finger on it. And what I mean is I, I've, I've watched you for over three years. Yes. As I said, you've been on this program and others here at the studio. And we appreciate that. Over the I appreciate years. that. And uh, you, you always come with enthusiasm, with resolve, with commitment, with the best of intentions. You get a lot of people involved. Um, and still, it's not nearly enough. And the Race for Peace is not, not really an organization, as we've discussed before. It's a movement. You started a movement. Yes. And, and you've gotten a lot of people involved in that movement. But it's still not clear to me what single goal you have in mind. Uh, let me give you an example, and it's, maybe it's a bad example, but maybe you say to Philadelphia, the city of Philadelphia, uh, there were l last year X number of murders in Philadelphia, black on black, just black on black. And I'm making a commitment, you and the Race for Peace are making a commitment with the city of Philadelphia that we are going to cut that rate, we're going to cut that number, we're going to reduce that number by 10, by 15, by 100, and here's how we're going to do it. Is that something you could take on? Not, that's not just call attention, not just get people to admit we have a problem, but come up with a solution. Yes, and that's what we're going to be doing on December the 9th. We, mm -hmm. Because the gentleman that I was speaking about, they have resources. Mm -hmm. Don has a school. You know, neither, what more could I say? Yeah. We have all the resources that's possible. One of them do the homeless. One of them do runaways. I mean, this is a lot of resources that we're bringing to the table along with the solution mm -hmm. and the problem. So we're not just saying one on one and you don't hear nothing else. We're saying one on one is two. Yeah. So we're giving you the problem, we're giving you the answer, but we're asking other people to stand up too. You know, we're asking the athletes, the entertainers, yeah. the news, like we're on we're on this show right now. Uh -huh. 
So it's not just me, Andrew Howe, by himself. It's everybody, you know, and I'm looking for, um, like I said before, there's so many people that's educated, but where do they go? They're right. taught, you're taught to work, you're taught to go to school, get a job, buy an apartment, buy a house. Mm -hmm. You're not taught, go to school, own your job, purchase a home. These are the things, so there's a different mm -hmm. road we're going to be taking. Mm -hmm. Go to school, own your job, mm -hmm. have your own corporation, you know, so it's, it's a little different. Is, is that um, meeting in December open to the public? Anybody so can It's attend? open to the public. We'll be inviting a lot of dignitaries to the meeting, but the meeting is about look, listen, and learn because we wouldn't be having the meeting yeah. if they had the solution. Yeah. So this meeting is not for any big shot or anybody in a big prestigious you. title yep. to come. I'm inviting these guys to look, listen, and learn. You know, and like you say, hopefully get a commitment mm -hmm. out of the public, mm -hmm. out of the community, because the modern day heroes mm -hmm. are the ones who are in the community. Say again, please, the date and the place and the, the time. The date is December the 9th, what 2019. Day, what day of the week is that? December the 9th. Hold on, let me pull that. Oh, okay. I saw, I <laughs> but saw it's, December, it's December the 9th, Alrighty. 2019, at 12th and Cambria Recreation Center. What time? So that's 2901 North. 12th Street, 19133, Philadelphia, PA. All right. Uh, what time? Uh, from 6 at night, 6 p.m. Oh. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a two-hour gap, mm -hmm. which you could pretty much captivate the audience within two hours. Mm -hmm. There's no Q&A. Mm -hmm. We're telling you the problem. It's just, and we're the, just the panel? It's just the panel. We're telling you the problem. We're giving you the answer. After that's over, with say an hour and a half, right. then if they want to mingle, if the police commissioner, I think she probably will come, and other people have come, mm -hmm. and they want to mingle, think Casey may come, you know, uh, uh, Senator Casey, Pennsylvania Senator Casey, uh, they can do so. But like you said, Rick, where are the results? Yeah. We've seen what yeah. Race, to Race to Peace has produced, and mm -hmm. I see some of the results. I don't see some of the results from a lot of other yeah. groups. Well. I wish you the best. Uh, God knows we need a solution. And my son is out here. So I have Aleem out here. He, you know, Aleem Howe, he's out here doing his thing, you mm -hmm. know, helping out as much as he can. Is your cousin still involved? I've forgotten his name. Uh, yeah, everybody's still, you know, taking on mm -hmm. stuff on their own level. But I remember he sat here and I, it, I was dumbfounded when uh, he said his son had been killed, I think, by a police officer. Who am I talking about? It was your cousin, I think. Hameen. Hameen, yes. Mm -hmm. His son had been killed by a police officer. His brother. His brother, even worse. And and he forgave, and he was engaged with you in, again, bringing the police to the community together. Everybody wants resolve, and everybody wants, if they if they have a problem and they have to call the police, they want it, that they want to get that taken care of. Yeah. You know, and that being said, you cannot have the majority hating the police. Mm. So this is the mentality that we're up against. But it's changing. Excuse me, it's changing. It's changing. I, I, I hope you're right. But when I see uh, news reports of people sitting on police, uh, uh, assaulting police, you, you, I hope. Well, we're I the model and we're the blueprint for America because yeah. when you look at our, we have to take, yeah. you know, justification for ours too. Yeah. And so far, so good. I love you, Rick. Good to God see you. God bless you. Thank Be you. good. Be well. And keep up the good work. Uh, my guest today has been Andrew Howell, and, uh, the founder of Race for Peace. Uh, keep in mind the meeting on December the 9th. Uh, go to the website if you'd like additional information. Until next time, this is 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. Take very good care of yourselves.